No. Do you, do you, does anybody know what no dig is? We've heard about it. Your friend was talking about it. We had a lot in, in Filey with one of our friends, and I think she had an idea about it, didn't she? Well, no, we, we said, yeah. So what she did was she just put cardboard down. Yes. And then just manure. Manure and some and some soil and then we were there around then after that but I'm assuming that was actually waited for it to do its thing and then like do it but then she's okay. changed it all since then right oh okay okay so you're completely correct so cardboard first and you can lay that straight on grass you can lay it straight on weeds I mean depending on the size of the weeds because you want <laughs> the cardboard to be flat um, and then you put manure down it has to be mature manure because otherwise it's too acidic so it needs to be at least a year old um, so, you get <laughs> next door neighbour, oh, he's got cows, and then there's a, a chap, one of the other next door neighbours, he's got um, a horse. So they've got all the manure that they've been, you know, saving up, I suppose, yeah. off the, the field. So uh, yeah, we've, we've been getting it, and this is where bottles of wine and exchanges and things come, yeah. come yeah. into its own. Yeah. But it's, it's, you know, when it's a community, um, and when you can share things, so... Uh, and I didn't finish it so that I could essentially show how you do it. So when, when you get your cardboard, it is nice when it's wet because it's so much easier, can you see, yeah. to peel off all the rubbish, yeah. which, you know, you don't want any plastic in your garden really. So you want to take all that off and you want to chuck it away. Um, and having a bin very close by is extremely useful. <laughs> so yeah, so you lay the cardboard down first, where exactly where you stood, Phil. Yeah. Um, and then you plonk on you love the manure and it's some people are afraid of manure because there are there are you know they're living things in it and, yeah. and this is the beauty of it um and then you basically you put loads of compost on on top where do you get the compost from so you can make it on your own okay yeah. um and depending on we can, we can i'll show you the composting later but depending on compost, so this is well this is bought compost because yeah. i haven't created it it yeah. hasn't it hasn't um matured enough so I've, I've bought loads of bags of, of yeah. compost and, and all this global warming stuff about not using peat, it's rubbish, yeah. you know, it's, uh, it's all good and, and no dig beds you can stand on, oh, okay. you know, so it's, it, it makes it so much easier. The health of the soil as well is incredible because once the cardboard breaks down in about six weeks, the worms then start to move everything and they aerate the soil basically and you can plant straight away. You don't have to wait for anything. Oh, right. So, it, which is the magic of it, you know? And when you dig into a bed, it's a bit like digging into your own body. It, it needs time to heal. And it's the finite, I suppose, construction underneath yeah. of, of how everything is actually growing. And so once you cut into it, it takes time to heal. And what the, what the land does, or what the soil does, is it tries to repair itself. So it will grow certain things in order to repair itself. Yes. And you just get a massive weed. And there's a really good example further down of my father has created a dug bed. Because he's, you know, it's, it is an old-fashioned thing. You have to plough the fields and nurture it. And yeah. Yeah. it's nonsense. <laughs> it's the funniest <laughs> thing, because everything is the opposite. You know, the world yeah. is flipped around, yeah, really. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so you can plant straight away. Um, does anybody have dandelions in their garden? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so the, the, the leaves in which um, how the dandelion grows is a really good example. So dandelion is trying to bring more calcium into the soil. So when the leaves are stood up like that, it's done its job. When the leaves are flat on the ground, it's trying to bring up more calcium. So things like adding, um, if you eat eggs, and um, you can also get these are pre-made, thankfully, from our lovely toads <laughs> in their garden. Every so often I find a load of shells and I think, oh, this is exciting because <laughs> the toad has been here and he's emptied out all, all the shells and you can crush these up and that's calcium for the soil. Okay. Same as eggshells, you can clean the eggshells, pop them in your compost, you know, with all your toilet rolls and all the good yeah. things that we throw away and mm -hmm. put in the, in the recycling, but you can use it all. Um, so that's a really good example. Um, there are other, I mean, a lot of these weeds um, that we call weeds, they're also, they've got a lot of medicinal purposes. I mean, dandelions, the root of dandelions, mm -hmm. dandelion and burdock drink. 
you know, it was it was used many many years ago. Yeah. So it's uh, any questions on this side? Yeah, yeah. So you you said you can plant straight away. Yes. Do you just plant to the cardboard or through the cardboard at that point? Well, I mean, for example, a, a potato will just be literally a um, uh, where, where is my uh, my trowel? The, the trowel here. Right. Uh, this is copper. Copper is amazing for the soil. They do cost a little bit more than your ordinary trowel. And I've got a hoe which is also copper. But it leaves fragments of copper in the soil. Oh, okay. Slugs don't like copper. Oh, <laughs> uh, and the funny thing about slugs, does everyone know, does anyone know much about slugs? They eat lots of things, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they see so like them. <laughs> there are different types of slugs. So there are slugs that are good for composting. So your brown slugs. You generally find them on things that are decaying. Right. Black slugs will eat everything. Right. And then the ones that are tigerish will eat all the slugs. So they're the predator of the slugs. Yeah. Um, so when you see brown slugs, you're happy. <laughs> when you see black slugs, you want to go and find a toad. <laughs> or a hedgehog or something. So you make it available. You make it a free environment for the birds, you know, for for I mean, I, I dug up one potato plant just here the other day and there was caterpillars around and I thought, perfect, I'll just leave them be because that will then attract the birds, you know, and then the birds attract different things and mm -hmm. the, you know, it's, it's, it's a magical environment. So mm -hmm. all these things, they try and teach us something. It's not, you know, pest control. It's not, you know, fighting against it. It's working with it and just, you know, appreciating everything. And things like, you know, Tony's been amazing. This is my partner, Tony. But, um, so he's, he's actually, if you, if you come around here, as an example, he's, he's built this watering system. I am, you do. Um, over some of the no-dig beds. us with them and playing with the soil and you know there's the, the most incredible thing about the earth is the fungi do you know much about fungi and mushrooms and things yeah. Yeah. Is it, we, we, we learned this year we've come the fungi is like the fruit on the top of the plants underneath exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. so mushrooms are a flower mm -hmm. of the plant and the plant is everywhere and you know when you, you, you have something that's a bit old and it goes a bit mouldy? Mm -hmm. well, we've got spores everywhere yeah. and that's, that's fungi. Mm -hmm. It's essentially the same. It is the end of life. It brings new life upon us because it, it, it decays everything and puts it back into the soil. So even a, you know, a rat that dies, you know, the, the fungi will grow through that and, and just bring it back into the soil. Mm -hmm. We are of the earth you know, and everything comes from it and to it. But the magic about mushrooms is that when it grows underneath it can feed everything so if something is you know it's lacking in a nutrient or it's lacking in water then it will feed it basically mm -hmm. and the magic of all this um, manure is that it has actually brought already loads of mushrooms mm -hmm. and and when you when you kind of you part the leaves you start to see the mushrooms they're, they're, they're all over the place mm -hmm. there's mushrooms here there's a lot of mushrooms that you can eat, and this is another inverted thing. I know. They're dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If you eat the wrong one, you're dead yeah. instantly. <laughs> you know. <laughs> it's like berries. Don't yeah. eat them. Don't touch them. You know. But you know, it's just just a little bit of knowledge. Yeah. You know, essentially sets you free because there's foraging everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Hawthorn is the most incredible blood cleanser and hawthorn berries as well. They've all got their place in nature. And I used to feed, and it was, I suppose that the, the start of the journey for me was my horse, I, I, I rescued a racehorse. 
and and he was very sick um, because they they you know they they really pushed them to their limits. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, so he had lots of gut issues and things and and, and problems, and he would eat so much hawthorn, and it, it was a really good example, you know, because horses they know exactly what they need. Um, a bit like, uh, does anyone know the, the green algae, it's a water algae called chlorella? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. okay. A bit like spirulina. So yeah. chlorella is, is, um, is one of the oldest green algaes on the planet and it's really good for detoxing the body, it clings on to metals and things and takes yeah. it out of your system. But it's one of the ones that when it tastes disgusting, your body's had enough. And it's not the nicest tasting stuff, basically. <laughs> so if it tastes okay, then your body needs more. Mm. And when it tastes disgusting, which is really, <clears throat> excuse me, it's really good to do self-selection. And that's where you dip your finger in something and taste it. Yeah. And have you ever seen horses or dogs, uh, cats, I think, just hold their mouth open. They'll taste something, hold their mouth open. So they're, they're thinking about whether they need any more of it. Mm. And horses do this kind of, it looks like they're talking. Mm. Yeah. Bring their lips up, but they're, they're, they're sending, the information up to their brain to find out if they need any more of it and self-selection is is incredible so we'll do some tasting of things and yeah. so you can i suppose taste something that's come straight out of the ground and yeah it, it's incredible yeah, yeah. yeah well, i mean that's what they teach in ayurveda isn't it listen to the body because the body will tell you yeah. exactly. the body will tell you what yeah. you need yeah and the, you know you can be with health you can think if it tastes disgusting it's because it's healthy and you can keep pushing through that <laughs> so, oh it's meant to taste disgusting but really <laughs> you've had enough of yeah, it yeah exactly <laughs> yeah. and then it comes out the yeah. other end yeah. And, yeah. and you have a bit of a nightmare and, yeah, like, oh, and I you feel better now. <laughs> <laughs> we live and learn we, we used to meet a guy and we, yeah. we used to pick mushrooms and, yeah. we, and we'd say to because we give them all this stuff you're talking about now but how do you know they won't poison you? So I always take a little bit of when I get home. You tell them if I'm a silly next morning, I cook it for me breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, exactly. <laughs>